I was involved briefly with a married man who believed he had the courage to leave his wife to be with me and to live his truth. This isn't the typical story of a married man promising to leave his wife for a secret lover. Rather, this is a story in part about a gay man who knew he was gay before he got married, but chose to marry a woman because he didn't know how to break free. Rocky and I met on a gay social media site three months after I returned to the East Coast to live, and just 11 months after he was married. At the time we met, he was living and working in Dubai as a contractor for the government on a military base, while his wife was stationed in Tallahassee, Florida, where they had a home. In one of the first messages he sent me, Rocky shared that he was married, but that he had regrets. He explained that he had come out to his mother and siblings when he was 18 years old. He said that to listen to more of One Thing for Certain, Two Things for Sure, a memoir continued, visit audible.com. Hey, girl, hey. <laughs> hey, boy, hey. <laughs> hey, everyone. Good day, thinkers, thought leaders, progressives, and dreamers. I'm Craig the Writer Stewart. I'm Derek J. We're going to start this one off a little differently tonight. Why? Well, how are we starting? We're going to start with housekeeping. Now, it cost us to do this. <laughs> Instead of, instead of doing it at the end. Right. Oh, I need to put your um thing down here. You're always thinking about yourself. See, I forgot to put your... It's okay, Craig. Just, you know. I, I get it. Derek J's cash app is Derek J Hair. Okay. It's, it's fine. Craig, I was thinking about his damn self. No, no, no. I, listen, I was just so That's busy. Derek you literally did. just walked through the door. Well, let's handle it's house like, like you did last week. All right. Yeah. You pulled one of mine. All, 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 like you do every time. Right. But, but listen, this cost us. Derek's week was this week to pay the intern. <laughs> I paid last week. So if you want to support us and to continue this and to keep this going, we need you to cash app us. Mine is here. Derek's is Derek J. Hare. Yes. Matt, hold on. Because just, we keep having to dig into our wallets and purses. Oh, you can't do it while we up, huh? No, no. I thought I could. Wait, click, wait, click on that. This the the little three dots. Maybe. Oh, maybe we can do it right there. Edit name. Oh. There we go. Oh, you okay. can do it right there. Yes. Oh, look at that. Go ahead. Look go at ahead, that. Craig. Look at God. We'll put my little hash, my little money Derek, side up there, child. Derek J. Hair. Uh-huh. H-A-I-R. Face feel. I, I can. You. All right. I'm just a little nervous. Oh, you're nervous. Why are you nervous? Hmm. You should be nervous, though. Why should I be nervous? Because, Craig, you know. I do not body shame. You do. No, no Craig, I don't. You do. No, I don't. And you know, and to think, the day that the day that we're having a body shaming uh, conversation, mm -hmm. you know, one of your posts today. What did I post? Could be on Instagram? Yeah, on Instagram. What did I post? With that big girl dancing. I didn't post that because she was dancing, because she was big. Well, I posted is, it. I posted it because of the sound effects that they put in the video. I know, but that of her dancing. You know, but you're being complicit to the fat shaming. Anyway, we're just. Oh, oh, what I wanted to say was, we are almost at the end of our series. Yes, we have one, two, three, four, five, six more to go. Yeah, until we're at the end of the series, and that's of course on December second because we do these biweekly, and then we're gonna take a break. We don't know how long that break is going to be, but we're going to take a break. Do we have to regroup? We're going to regroup. I think. Yes. And then we're going to offer you guys a chance to give us some topics that you guys like to talk about. And they already have. Somebody yeah. emailed last mm -hmm. week, so I added those to the list that we've already started. Mm -hmm. And then Craig and I also talked earlier today about opening it up past just LGBTQ. We want to include women. We want to get cute women. So it's black about women. Black women. And so it's about just about, about black it's topics. gonna be it's gonna be black topics, right? About all across the board. Everything black. Everything black. So, but yes, but tonight we are talking about body shaming. And I can say being um in the in the public eye, mm -hmm. you know, I've been body shamed a lot, you know. Mm -hmm. Um and it's 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 it, it, it makes you very self-conscious. Um and even even as confident as people may think that you are. Um, you know, because everybody has insecurities, right? Yeah, see, doesn't mean you're an insecure see, look, person, right? Look at this, like like Miss Doll Chapman. Derek, how's your ankles? What happened to my ankles? I guess from the bike. Oh, you... see, you thought she was. I thought it would be a funny dog. You you thought she was. Talking... How you know my? I didn't tell nobody my my I fell about you. Told somebody my business. I talked about it yesterday. Oh, girl, I thought you'd be no. a funny dog. Okay, so you thought she was saying you have heavy ankles? Yeah, because they they say that. See. I wear heels. I'm 
I'm sorry, dog. I thought you'd be a funny girl. I'm about to get your ass together. I was yeah. like, well, we're not, we ain't about to do that tonight, girl. You, you were ready to pull down together. I was ready to pull, pull, pull down together. See? Uh, but, <laughs> but, you know, but the thing about it is that, like I said, you, it, get, it makes you self-conscious. No mm. matter how, like for me, I, I still, you are very rarely see me with like my shirt and stuff off. Like, mm -hmm. like I'm not a, what you mean? Like at a, like at a pool or beach or something? Yeah. Okay. You know, I mean, I would I'm, I'm wear stuff sheer. But yes, to me, just do. mentally, but mentally, I have on clothes. So, because even when we go riding on our bicycle, everything you wear is a medium. It's somewhere between a small and medium. No, it's not. See, here go Craig go again. I'm, I'm not. I'm not. Life. I'm not body shaming. I'm just. No, everything is tight. Uh, correct. I'm challenging. Not, I'm just challenging. But people. it's because it's spandex. Not everything. Yes, everything I wear is spandex. A lot of stuff that you wear is spandex, but not, not that pink tunic that's cut open in the back. Yeah, but that's not tight. This is cut open in the back. And my shirt, my arms is out. I'm just challenging the veracity of what he's saying. Okay? <laughs> see, you see, that's all, the thing, okay, I wear a lot of spandex stuff. Spandex is what? Tight, Greg. And Dude, stretchy. Yeah, who wears loose spandex? No, I understand. Okay. I'm not body shaming, though. But Craig is a body shamer. See, the thing I about it, Craig, you really are. It's okay. <laughs> it's like, it's but as a friend, I'm talking to you as a friend is that like, you know, like, hey, this is what you are. And you you are. And I, I when, what I would do, what we do, what I do now, when I do bring something out for Craig, I just make sure I point it out every time you have your moment. Okay. But, I, but I did, well, I actually, I really did have a lot of DMs and comments about this. It was like, you know, Craig does this a lot. I said, I know. They say that I body shame? Yes. Well, because I post something funny on my well, Instagram. Well, I don't know. You just... Because you, I post something funny on my Instagram you know, and it happens, happens you to be say, a, a heavy person. But, but you do, you'd say a lot of quippy things that may be... That you may feel is just funny and quippy, but it could be a little bit... Or is it that person. you and the other people that may be overweight may be sensitive? Because it's a heavy person. Because if it was a thin person... Because I posted... I posted... In fact, if you follow my Instagram, mm -hmm. I posted a video of these really thin white girls, and they were like dancing, and it sounded like six banging together. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> like, it had nothing to do. So, well, listen, I'm just, I'm just telling you, and it's not about being sensitive, because that's just like, but see, the thing about it is that, well, we won't, I won't go into that part of the conversation, but. Uh -huh. We have people here that want to talk about their journey of being body share. Like I said, for me, like I said, being on television for a long time, I have been. And what what, what what kind of the things? What are oh, the child, things? I had everything. I mean, the, it, it's so crazy because if I wear something too big, that's a problem. If I wear something too tight, that's a problem. If I wear something my size, that's a problem. Um, and the thing is that everything I buy fits. Mm -hmm. You know, it may not fit the way you want it to fit, but it fits the way I like it to fit. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when I buy my suit jackets, I make sure the bitches clothes, you know, I think not all those things, but it doesn't function for everybody the way they want. Right. So, oh yeah, every time, and it don't, it don't matter what you do, honey. I, I can post a beautiful picture of me and something that's beautiful and, not, and that fits perfectly. And they're like, oh, look at his fat ass in this again. Look at that. Da, 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 da. So, it just goes on and on and on. But And then the other part of this conversation too, it's also about, as it relates to LGBTQ, mm -hmm. especially as gay men, oftentimes gay men are so focused on physique, like mm -hmm. muscular physiques. Mm -hmm. So if you've been body shamed for being too thin or not having muscles or mm -hmm. being too fat mm -hmm. and not having muscles. So we're going to, we want to expand it to that as well. Mm -hmm. So we have, I think four people down here that have joined the panel. Yes. And we want to start. So by, we're going to start with them. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to also open it up to, to you guys. To you guys. After you hear, because I think that once, we we've had this happen before. We have a large panel, but I think once you hear people's stories, that you may feel, um, you know, encouraged to have right. the conversation. So I'm gonna tweak this out so more people can jump in here. So y'all do. You, you want me to drop the link in the comments now, and they'll just kind of hold. Well, no, not yet. Wait? Yeah, okay. that, no. Let's go through. Let's go through this part okay. first. But let me tweak this out because I forgot to do it, y'all. All right. So we're gonna start with SB. Hey, what's up, Craig? What's up, Derek? Hey, how, how are, are you? you? I'm good. I'm calling from, I'm 30 years old. I'm calling from Oakland, California. Okay. okay. And, um, and, so talk uh, about your experience with body shaming so, in the LGBTQ community. So when it, when it comes to body shaming, for me, it's being like too big, too fat, 
And uh, I experienced that in my like early 20s, especially mm-hmm. when I was around uh, one of my friends. Uh, she's like more smaller than me and she's mixed. She's black and she's Asian. So when we like go to like to the club or we go to like to the pride, like it will be like more females on her because like she's more smaller and they like look past me because I'm, I'm I'm more bigger. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm. So so that made me like feel some type of way like, OK, well, maybe I need to just like lose a little bit of weight and I need to get my stuff together. Were there so things that, I, I'm sorry. Oh, no, go ahead, Craig. I was going to say, were there things that people have said to you directly about your weight or your size or? No, it's just like when it comes to where, where, where I'm from, like when I was single, I'm happily taking my girlfriend watching, by the way. What's up, baby? <laughs> <laughs> well, congratulations. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so, um, this basically like when, uh, when it comes to certain lesbian films and, and bisexual films, they like look past me and just they because they want, would want like somebody like smaller. And I feel like for me to like get attention or just get like a couple of females like me, I would feel like I would dip into my pockets and like, okay, mm. well, like, let me just pay you, let, let me uh, let take you out to the movies or out to eat. And that's where it became where where past relationships and situationships like would use me for my money. So I feel like I would have to do uh, like the most because I was just too big. You know? So that's 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 how I deal with body shaming. So how so how does it how was that for you for your self esteem? Um, and then how did you work through it, or are you still working through it? No, I mean I, I always you know you always got to love yourself first before you can love anybody else. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I mean, I had uh, when in my single days, like I had, uh, I you know it was it was some people that I was looking at me, but not too much. But, you know, I appreciate the woman that I'm with now. Like she loves me for me. She loves everything about me. So, you know, I can't complain about that. So, <laughs> you know, I, 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 didn't, I didn't move past that. So now nah, I'm good. I'm great. I'm happy. Mm-hmm. Now, have you always been this size your whole life or? Well, when I was like little, I was I was smaller, you know, about like seven, eight, I was real small. And mm-hmm. then like after a while, you know, I started eating much. So yeah, I always had like a little little gut. And then I, and then like of course after high school it just got it just it got worse. And then when my dad died back in uh twenty seventeen, that, that caused a lot too for me, like gaining weight, eating a lot because you know, dealing with that. So Mm-hmm. Now, have that with with the way that people, that the way that you felt people treated you, did you feel the need to? Did you work towards trying to lose weight or try to? Like, what did you do to make yourself suitable in people's eyes? Well, I mean, I did. To, I got to a point where I didn't care how people feel, and like when it comes to health. I've been like my weight been up and down, so I've been on uh, like a keto lifestyle. That's been really helping. Mm-hmm. So my weight been like really up and down. So I just at, at the end of the day, I love myself and my, my lady. She loved me to death, so that's all that matters. And then my family, they love me too, so that's all that matters. I can, I, I can really mm-hmm. So what what everybody else thinks. Okay, yeah. but thank you very much, dog. We're gonna drop you down and we'll bring you back up for a roundout. Okay. Okay. Cool. All right. Now you said something interesting today. Derek and I had lunch or late dinner or something. We had something. All right. <laughs> we ate. <laughs> and you said, um, you've always been inside. We were talking about another friend of ours. Mm-hmm. And I was saying how he was thin. Mm-hmm. And Derek didn't know that. Derek was like, oh, he used to be thin. I was like, yeah, he was thin. And he always talks about he wants to get back to that. And Derek was like, see, I've always been this yeah, size. Yeah, I've always been this size. So I don't know anything other than this. So, right. um, and... I honestly didn't have a problem with me until everybody else told me I had a problem. And do you I think was it was fine. And do you think it was because of TV? Yeah, it was because of TV. It was because yeah. of TV. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was I was good with me. Um until everybody else started telling me it was a problem. I was like, oh well, damn, maybe I do need to mm-hmm. do something, you know? So, but hmm. hey. So who are we gonna bring up next? Trent. Hey, what's up? Hey, hey how, how are, are you? you? I am great. How are you guys? We're good. Great. Thanks for being here. Okay. 
So um, what did you, what, what made you want to participate in this conversation? Uh, I wanted to participate for a couple of reasons. And I think the first reason is in the, um, in the gay community, if you could be fat, if you don't fit the prototype of the stereotypical gay man, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when I would go like out with my aunt back in the 90s to the clubs and stuff, nobody would approach me because they thought I was just like her boyfriend or something like that. Mm -hmm. Once they found out I was gay and they saw me in person, then they would be more interested in me because I'm not an unattractive guy already, but being over 300 pounds for like, I was like over 300 pounds, like all of my thirties, mm -hmm. like the entire time. And I'm just 5'10". And how, and how, are you, how old are you now? I am 43. Okay. And how much do you weigh now? I weigh 275, but I want to tell you why I weigh 275 now. Uh -huh. And that's because I've signed a, a music deal. 10 okay. years ago, I sold publishing and kind of got my feet wet in the music industry. And I thought I was just going to be an artist then. You know, I was like 350 then. Mm -hmm. And music executives told me, you fat, you old, and you gay. Just stick to writing songs. You're not ready for this industry. It took me 30 years from the time I was 13 to being 43 to sign my first record deal. And in the record deal, they told me that I have to maintain a particular weight. So mm. that's why I've lost like 45 pounds in the last three months. Mm -hmm. and so, you, I, you, so as you can see in the entertainment industry, especially yeah. the entertainment industry, it's a very... Um, it's a certain look that goes along with what people like. Like you know, the crazy thing about it, what I what I find really, really weird is that people always want diversity and they want to see people that look like them. They say but, that. They anyway. say that. But then when they see somebody look like them, they talk crazy about them. Right. Right. Which is absolutely nuts. I mean, but then like back to the, I guess the gay part of it is. Yes. If you're a guy that doesn't necessarily fit the stereotype of somebody who's stereotypically gay and you're masculine and you're a top, you can you can get away with being overweight because, you know, the little gay dudes still want to fuck with you because you're 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 and it's so it's so bad to say this. They they like you because you don't look like them or because you don't look like the stereotypical gay person. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I found that a lot. Now, don't get me wrong. A lot of people were just flat out. They don't want to date me because I'm overweight, period. And they don't care if you a top. They don't care if you masculine. They don't care about nothing. Mm -hmm. But I felt like because I'm an attractive guy and I might be fat, but I got other attributes working for me. And that's how I was able to date. Mm hmm. Now so. I see where I see where um, somebody said that being overweight can lead to health problems. But see the problem, so and which I agree with. But mm -hmm. the problem with it, especially within the black gay community, overweight is not really overweight. You know, a uh, size thirty six is overweight <laughs> for in in the in, in the in the black gay community. Is that weight is just. Is very subjective, mm -hmm. subjective mm -hmm. in the black gay community, you know, um, because like to me, how I get treated, um, you would think I was four hundred pounds, mm -hmm. you know. So, but that's just what it. But that's just how it. So, functions. so help me clarify. So, when you say the way that you're treated, sometimes, mm -hmm. do you mean by people that you encounter in everyday life, or do you mean the way that you were treated because you were a person on TV, or both, both, yeah. So both. was it just well, like because so if you if even submerges yourself in the black gay um, club lifestyle, mm -hmm. you know, like you said, everything is about physique, about, about body, and all this other exactly. stuff. And if you don't have, it's either if there's no in between. It's either you are or you're not. Right. It's either you skinny, body, or you just fat. Mm -hmm. That's it. Those are your three options, you know. And I wasn't skinny, and I wasn't body, so you just 
you just fake. Mm-hmm. So what? So was it was it snide remarks? Is it snide remarks? Um, because you said. The well, way- I mean that that was so that was so long ago, you know. Right. But you said people sometimes make it seem as if you're 400 pounds. Right. What is something that has been said or done that made you feel like, well, damn, am I? Well, I mean, it's not it's not that it's, it's not so much about what people say. It's just people's actions, you mm-hmm. know. So it's not it's not even about what people say, mm-hmm. um, you know, or, or or even if it's kind of like, well, you know, I don't really date bigger guys. It's like, well, goddamn, well, how big you think I am? Mm-hmm. Like, well, like, please tell me mm-hmm. that I went to a big boy prime and I saw all them big people and I was like, well, shit, I'm tiny compared to these people so like what like how do even how, how does this even work so it's all subjective right? I mean, but, uh, but, but, how are you where are you at with where are you at with um one self-esteem um one your mental space um now i think i kind of rode on my on my looks as far as my face a lot mm-hmm. because being overweight and being gay, that shit is hard. Yeah. It's hard. I mean, because it's just like my prospects of people to date are, are you know, have been very, very small because mm-hmm. there's only a certain amount of people that's, that, you know, that'll fuck with you, with you being, you know, I'm fine. Well, let, me play, let me play devil's advocate, Trente, because I remember you on a previous panel. Yeah. Is the, is your dating option, um, mm hmm. It's your, it's your. <laughs> I'm sorry, I pass, We got we got to pass notes, you know, so we can we can know where we where we at. <laughs> I hate you. <laughs> but what I was gonna say was, you said that your dating options are, are are smaller or you know less or fewer because of your weight or your size, right? But I remember you being on a, a previous panel and you were saying you are interested in a very particular type of guy. True. You want a guy that's extremely feminine, a, a guy who, and I, correct me if I'm wrong, but I remember you saying something about he has to be okay with you calling him his wife, your wife, and right? I mean, well, that's that's just in with my current fiance. That's just between us. But my type is feminine uh short petite pretty big ass i mean they don't necessarily have to be all of those things but uh you can say that i have a a, a type yeah okay because because i believe that it's okay to have standards but when you start having a type that that narrows your options Mm -hmm. a type it really cuts you out of the running Mm -hmm. it's okay to have standards but having a type yeah, that's another conversation. It's a different conversation. So, Trey, we're gonna we gonna pop you down, and we're gonna pop okay. somebody else up. We're gonna bring you up in a roundabout, okay? All right. And then while we're bringing in this next person, I just want to throw this out here just to play devil's advocate. So, you all, some of you, I see some of your comments. Some of you, and you have said that I do low key body shame. How is that different from you queens calling me old? How is that different from you to you age shaming? I can handle it. I have thick skin, and I let it roll off my back. Oh, no, 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 sweetie. But see, the, pro- see, the, the problem, about, the problem mm-hmm. with this is, is that, yes, I do age shame you. And I've, <laughs> oh, said, okay. and I've said I do. Your problem is that you said you don't fat shame. So that's a problem. Well, so I, 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 I don't I, think that I do, though. Because a lot of people that do things don't think that they're doing something wrong until somebody brings it to the attention. But but the difference is, but wait, Go ahead. Wait, the difference is when you bring it to my attention, I say, you know what, Craig? I may do that, and that is what that is. Am I going to stop? Probably not. But I'm acknowledging what that what the conversation is. You don't acknowledge what the conversation. Well, is. Well, because you gave me one example of a video that I posted. On well, my no, Instagram. no, no. Well, I mean, because think about it, because I don't pay you no mind. Okay. I mean, like, so I just kind of I let stuff just. I, I'm just like you. I just let it roll off and go by my. Business. Well, see, I'm going to need support. So, I'm going to need. I'm gonna, your Honor, well, I'm going to need evidence. But well, see the thing. Well, see the. That's the difference between me and you. Have I ever fat shamed you? You probably have. Oh, see. But I don't pay you no mind, Craig. Because if we go back and forth with situations, I don't pay you no mind. So I'm not gonna see. I'm not gonna. Because what kind of friend would I be if I said that I kept a ticker on your ass by every time you said something out of the pocket? James L. James said, "Craig, people say that you are older, but oh no, that ain't what I want to say." <laughs> wait, wait, where, where, where is the comment? Somebody said, "Craig, you said something about um, the people with heavy ankles broke your chairs." Well, they did. They <laughs> broken over here. It wasn't the thin friends that come over. It was the thick ones. But anyway, um, <laughs> hi, Michelle. 
Hello, gentlemen. Hi, Michelle. How are you? Hello, beloved Derek J. <laughs> How are you? My, my, my example of uh, body shaming is because I'm a tall woman. Mm -hmm. And uh, when you are a tall, I'm six feet. And when you're in, um, growing up, I was always um, growing height above most of the male well predominantly most of the males and and in society and it's gotten a little bit better because of models like naomi campbell and, mm -hmm. and who, who broke that but uh it's still there where uh men perceive a tall woman as being a threat mm -hmm. uh, and men see that as a woman shouldn't be t i even had a, a a guy tell me it's abnormal for a woman to be tall, women are supposed to be a, a, either short or medium height. And this was said by a short man. So I just lumped that in the category <laughs> that he was just, that, that was just, um, you know, <laughs> jealousy working at his. But um, growing when, when you're tall, people have this um, stereotype that you're, because you're tall, you're a bully. And that mm -hmm. wasn't the thing. Because you're tall, you should automatically know how to play basketball. Well, I didn't want to do that. Mm -hmm. If you're tall, um, all these negative and, and then negative connotations. Mm -hmm. And uh, growing up, I used to want to hunt. Uh, my mother caught me. What she did was she used to say, stand up straight. She always made that a prior. Stand up straight mm -hmm. and put your chin out. And uh, she said, if you ever find yourself hunching, always stick your chin out and that will help that that's going to help that mm -hmm. and so and then that took on another characteristic because the, oh you think you all that no my mother just taught me to stand up straight and stick my chin out and, mm -hmm. and roll my shoulders back so my chest stuck out so uh, all of and all of these proceed especially when you're this complexion Mm -hmm. You're not. That's I, was, I just, I just about to ask you that. Being a because you're, you're, you're a nice chocolate sister. So you being, so you chocolate. You six foot tall. So how did that, how did that play a role in, in uh, people perceiving you? Not so. Now I'm 51 years old. So growing up, most of my adversity came from the African American community. Mm hmm. Um, because there's nothing that I can do, I could have done to make myself small, to be less intimidating or less threatening to to my own kind. Mm -hmm. And um, and lo and behold, the people, the ones who told me that I was attractive was the white community, mm. because they said, "Oh, um, because um, growing up, I mean, I'm still a thin person, but growing, I was thinner." Mm -hmm. And they would say, oh, well, put my clothes on. You would look nice in this. And you would look, and I all, and to this day, I still wear things that's long and flowing because growing up, those are the type of pieces that they put on me, long and flowing pieces. So when I moved, they wanted their, their material to flow mm -hmm. like that. And I do walk fast and they like that because they wanted that, that aesthetic. Mm -hmm. But I mean, so much um, hatred. From my own kind and simply because of height complexion and what they perceived as me looking down it was always said oh you looking down your nose and no i'm taller than you so i have to look down to address you so i don't think i don't think i'm better than you i don't think i'm anything and for a long time that body shaming for me turned into self-shaming Mm -hmm. And it wasn't until I started to study, I learned about Amazons, I learned about um, the Watusa women of Africa, how they were a taller breed. I learned about uh, different uh, women from Africa, different uh, nations of Africa where the women were taller. And that broke a lot of that. That broke mm -hmm. a lot of that for me. Now, my, I, what, age, what age were you, what age were you did that you started to break? that thought process of yourself in my 20s okay in my 20s i started to study because it, it was really getting it was for me it was getting bad because um you suppose they wanted uh a european like by uh, well i'm like i said uh, i'm a smaller frame but i still have I, I had my my ancestors' curves. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They, 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 the thing was always you're too tall, and you need um, 
that was always the thing. They never really said anything about the, the, the shape of my frame. It was just that you're just too tall. And that's mm-hmm. something that should be on a man. And, 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 that, and that was just, it was just horrible. And from my own community. Now, did that, did that make you, I'm going to make sure I answer, I'm going to answer the question right. With that kind of backlash from your community, did that make you turn away from your community? There was a there was a point in my life that it did, yes. Mm-hmm. And, and yes. you turned away in what way? I didn't go to white. No, I just didn't want to be. <laughs> well, that's what I told you. Know, you know, that's what Craig was wanting to know. What? Craig wanted to make sure you weren't going to no white man, child. Well, that, well, that's, <laughs> well, that's why I was asking, you know, because communication is our partner, clarity is our friend. <laughs> I just didn't want to be bothered with, with it, it made me not want to, it made me distrustful. Mm-hmm. Of, I was distrustful of the white community because I, I didn't want to be an experimentation. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Don't date me just because you want to find out what black women do or what black women have downstairs. Mm-hmm. And then for the black community, I was upset because it, it was so much, I, I, so much internalized hate being projected outward. Mhm. Mhm. Mm. Oh wow! But th- thank you for sharing that story with us. We're gonna. Well, so then, where where are you at now with yourself? Oh, much better, much better. I have embraced myself. I have embraced my own um, beauty. I have embraced myself spiritually. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm much better. That that broke off of me at twenty five. Gotcha. Good. You got you, you you got into it early. You say you know what we ain't about to have. This is not about to be a lifelong thing going on. No, it's not because I, I I can't spend the rest of my life hating myself, waking up every morning and hating myself and thinking that it was something wrong with my aesthetic and my height. I couldn't do that. Hmm. Well, thank you very much, and we'll bring you right. We'll bring you back up again for the roundabout. Okay. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, yeah, so I'm glad it was able to get a different perspective about mm-hmm. just being. Fat shaming. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, because when she said about well, height, I hadn't even thought about height. Yeah, I mean, yeah. that is definitely a thing. It's mm-hmm. definitely a thing. Um, I just shared the link in the chat. So if you want to join the conversation, and we're going to go back um, with the panel that we have, but I did share the link in the uh, chat. If you want to join the conversation, if you want to contribute, add something to it, you're welcome to join. Okay. And um, then- we're going to bring in Derek. He's yes. our last panelist. Derek, are you there? I am here. Greetings, blessed ones, salutations to all. How are you? And you spell your name right. Perfect. You yes, know, the Jarvis. A lot of people, you know, all those, all those wrong Derek's out there, just wrong. Yes, they know it's there to do right. Derek, where are you So, at? um, good to meet you. I am in Detroit. Okay. Okay, I'm from Toledo. Can you hear me? So, I know. Yeah, we can hear I've you. I've met you before. Oh, in Detroit? Yes, a while back. Oh, and the Woodward? Yes. <laughs> Is that a gay club? <laughs> uh, uh, uh. <laughs> I've never been to Detroit. <laughs> yeah, you were very nice. Well, thank you. <laughs> yes, so, you talk to so nice. what we're going to share on this on this on this topic. Yeah, so I want to talk about height shame. That's what I dealt with mostly. I am five five. I'm a, I fluctuate between 175, 180 pounds. So I am a little bit on the thicker side, but uh, mostly my journey has been about height uh, and the way I was built. I, I got thick thighs, you know, round behind. Uh, and just from, as a adolescent, a child, even from my family, like I felt like I was put into a category subconsciously Mm -hmm. even before they allowed me to be gay uh i was always told that you know my body was feminine and look at him like he was going to be gay from his inception from even the way i was built and i was uh they never said it directly but the comments they made uh, the way they made me feel i felt like they taught me how to be shamed of myself I, I have broken away from that, um, like the young lady prior to me. Uh, I learned how to accept myself from when I was 25. Uh, but my experience in the gay, now I never had a problem attracting who I wanted. Uh, I would like to say that, but uh, it's always been like 
those people <laughs> that were attracted to me. Let me have y'all conference up that, here now. Yeah, Between you and those Chris, people honey, that were we attracted to the panel. <laughs> <laughs> those people that were attracted to to me, were people that wanted a more feminine guy or a more submissive bottom, as it will be. And that's not me. First life is the best life. Uh, mm -hmm. But yeah, I felt like everyone always puts you in this category when you're short and a little stalky. Uh, they feel like you are um, much more feminine than you are. And here in Detroit, that's just not the life, especially being Black. Like, they make that a shameful thing. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm So then how is that? So how has that been for you for self-esteem wise? Uh self-esteem wise, uh through house high school, oh, yeah. I would say that's when I suffered the most. Um it was mostly the girls that would mess with my self-esteem, that would pick with me for some reason. I don't know what it was, but I never had really a problem here in Detroit. Uh with like guys picking on me, but it was the girls. I don't know mm -hmm. what that was about. Uh, they mostly pointed out like my behind, how short I was, my thighs, and they pointed out uh, uh, the feminine characteristics of my features. Uh, mm -hmm. So they had moved in from there because I did grow up in church. So I really wasn't open when I was at adolescent to up into my twenties, uh, moving mm -hmm. from there, like in the gay scene, I attracted those guys that wanted the more feminine character. And I would have sex, but I wouldn't date that much because of that. Uh, mm -hmm. I am happily engaged now. Uh, but yeah. Hold like, on. So, so you wouldn't date that much because of what? Because you like you were attracted to feminine guys? It's not that I was attracted to feminine guys. Uh, I was attracted to men in general, but I felt mm -hmm. like the guys that were attracted to me wanted me to be a certain way. And I didn't like right. that part about it. Okay. Mm -hmm. if that's and what, how did they want you to be? How did they, how did they want you to be? Uh, the submissive bottom, uh, be more of the feminine role character. Got it. Gotcha. Okay. So now, so where are you at with everything now? Are you, are you, are you strong in who you are? I mean, I, you got a fiance. So, I mean, I'm sure they, I'm sure he's telling you how beautiful, you, well, how handsome you are, how much he loves you, but where are you at um, with yourself personally? Yes, right now, right now I'm completely fine. Like me having a fiance doesn't like uh, regulate my feelings towards me. Mm -hmm. So I just want to make that clear. Like no one person can make you satisfied with yourself. That's a journey between you and God. And yes, I have overcome those demons and I'm a much stronger person because of my experience. And you, mm -hmm. you can't tell me nothing about myself. Uh, I do have those moments where, you know, if I eat a little bit too much that week, I get a little thicker uh, than a snicker. But, you know, I just got to you do those exercises, you go over in your head like, oh, you're fine, you this, you're that, and mm -hmm. being you, positive, you being more on the positive yourself. side. Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. Exactly. Well, thank you so much for sharing, dear. We're going to drop you back down. We're going to bring you back up for the roundabout, okay? No problem. Thank you. So yeah, this is, we had a tall, we have a short, and we got two thickums. And me a thickum, too. So it's three thickums. So I can't say thickum. No, you can't. That's just like a white person saying nigga. Can she say nigga? No. You're not thick. You can't say it. Keep it to yourself. But you girls can call me old. Oh, okay. Um, I guess you guys didn't want to join the conversation. And that's 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 that's, you that's know, fine. But that's what but that's bring up a month so we can get some mass thoughts. Okay. Everybody. So well, no, we'll do them one at a time, Craig. But we'll we'll start here. Okay. So, Michelle, if you can just give advice. To one, to a tall person that's going through what you went through, and then two, to those people that do that were doing the shaming, you know. So, can you give us a twofold advice? Yes, sir, I can. My twofold adv advice would be this whatever you're sending out into the environment, this projected uh, body shaming is only because it's a reflection of how you are feeling about yourself. Because mm -hmm. if you truly loved yourself, 
you would not be projecting that out on another person. Whatever we feel about ourselves, that's what we send out into the environment. If we mm -hmm. feel horrible about the way we look, we have to make somebody else feel horrible too. And I would say that to the person who is doing it and to the person receiving it, just recognize that those two energies are colliding. One is giving and one, and you also receiving that negative energy and you're both bouncing it against each other because the person that you're giving it to, they feel horrible. So they're going to keep um concede they're gonna concede it. It's it's almost like a sex it's almost like a sexual relationship. The giver mm -hmm. and the receiver and then a conception. Because the mm -hmm. person who you doing that to, they're gonna keep doing that to somebody else just like it was done to them. And you keep conceiving people with low self you keep you keep reproducing people with low self esteem. So that's mm -hmm. my advice. Mm. And then what about them for people that for someone that was that's going through what you went through. Um, what would your be your advice to get th to help them get through it? Um, whatever, whether okay for a topic like I did research and find out where your beauty comes from. Mm -hmm. Because everybody's beauty comes from somewhere, whether it's a short, like my brother who was um, just left, he said a short, look at um, the different um, African tribes or the different heights and, and how they move through the world. And like I said earlier, I had to um, research. Uh, women, tall women. Most of, they say most of the Greek goddesses were tall, and that was something. Most of uh, um, this African uh, women, uh, different African women who are just uh, tall and regal and beautiful. So, mm -hmm. so research your beauty. Research your individual beauty. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Michelle. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Um, you want to bring? We got somebody that just popped in. You want to well, bring? No, just, well, I mean, it's, it's not connected to it, so. Uh, so we just finish this up. Trentay, yeah. Okay, so a same question for you. What 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 advice would you give someone in, in your situation that was going through uh, what you went through, and how to like you know to get through it and keep their head up? And then what advice you give to those people that gave you that type of um, negative energy? I would encourage anybody, number one, to lose the weight for uh, health reasons, number one. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's kind of hard to do when you're, uh, you know, you're addicted. You're, you know, a food addict, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, I compared Whitney Houston's drug use to my food use. Mm -hmm. She's a person that's been skinny her whole life. So she could look at me and be like, why can't you just stop eating? And I tell her, why can't you stop doing cocaine? Um mm -hmm. I'm, I'm so, what was what was I'm sorry what was the question the, <laughs> well what I was asking you for you what advice would you give someone in your position that has been body shamed and say to, to keep their head up and then two what's it, what, what what advice you give the people that do the shaming like you know the, the advice that I would give someone who was in my same position would be if you don't like the results that you're getting in dating or in my case in business or anything like that, you need to lose the weight because it's the best thing for you to do. But then again, you have to you have to understand I'm not like one of these people that the the way Monique used to be, I don't like being fat. I don't mm -hmm. like it. I just don't. Like I don't like my, you know, wardrobe selection and stuff like that. I do not like being fat at all. So I mean, I, maybe I'm the wrong person to ask, but I would I would pretty much tell everybody to uh, get the weight off for um, health reasons. And then on top of that, you're going to look a lot better and feel a lot better. Okay. Well, thank you very much. All right. Thank you. SB. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just, yeah. just a big piggyback to uh, like what you said when it comes to the wardrobe selection. But when it comes, I, cause for me, I always have to go back between the two X and the three X. And I'm working on like to get to back to like extra large, but just number one, you just gotta love yourself and, and keep God first. And if you want to change it, like change your uh, change your way of eating and then work out. I mean, at the end of the day, you just gotta be comfortable and love yourself. There we go. That, that's the answer. That's, that I, is the answer. You know, it. I wouldn't, and not to be contrary to what Trente said, but I wouldn't suggest conforming. 
Because then you're chameleon in every aspect of your life. That's it. I mean, you'll really, try to become something that every you'll try to be what everybody wants you to be. And it wouldn't a, just be about your body. But that's a different conversation. But yeah. I mean, but it's something that it, I mean, depending on what you, I, we'll we'll have an outside conversation about that. Because <laughs> after that, we go, we'll go into something real deep. But right. yeah, but as we, I'm with you. The best thing we have to do right now is just love ourselves, right? Mm-hmm. That's all you can do. That's it. <laughs> Thank you so much for your time. I appreciate your input in this conversation. Thank you. Love y'all. Thank y'all for having me. Uh, you're welcome. Derek. Derek. <laughs> so <laughs> I will stick on theme when it comes to uh, loving yourself uh, mm-hmm. because a person of a particular size or weight, they can lose the weight or gain weight. However, that may fluctuate but a person that's short or tall can't really change their stature. Mm -hmm. So uh, you must first gotta love yourself. And that starts with like uh, speaking to yourself. You gotta Mm -hmm. treat self-esteem like it's a muscle. In order to build that, you have to work at it uh, daily, continuously, make a routine. So that's what my suggestion would be. Love and self-esteem, you gotta work at it. But thank you very much, Derek, and thank you for your input into this conversation. I appreciate that. His is a, his has a slight delay. Okay, so we have some people that popped into the room into the conversation. We're going to bring them on up and have um and see what they have to say to, to add to this conversation. Andrew, hey, can you hear me? Yes. Perfect. Hey, Andrew, how are Stop. you? I'm doing well. How are you doing? Nice to meet you, Derek, virtually. And um, hey, Craig. Same to you. So um, I just want to say it's a beautiful thing, Derek, what you're doing, holding Craig accountable. And that's the kind of piece I want to like lean towards (laughs) is, um, you know, sometimes you have to, um, you know, because sometimes you'll be around friends and stuff and they don't really understand and you'll let it slide and let it slide. And um, but they really need to know that you know, you go home and you think about that. You you wake up in the morning, you think about that. And it's like, if you can feel this way about this person, you know, what do you think about me? And so I found myself in a lot of cases because there was a time where I didn't even think I was on the plus side, like, you know, and then there was a time I did. And when I look back at my pictures, I was like, dog, it, it wasn't even that big then. If I had stayed in the mindset then of where mm-hmm. I am now, I would have been more confident. And um, I had some things where I would see bit, um, larger people like myself at the beach. I hate going to the beach to this day. And one of the reasons I hate going because everybody walk around with their shirt, shirts off. I hate going to the gym. Why? Because everybody wearing their muscle shirts and doing. And so I would see a bigger person at the beach and I would say, it's something about a bigger person with confidence. I mean, like I loathe for it. It's just like they out at the beach with their shirt off. And I'm like, I'm not, and I would even say problematic stuff. Like I'm not even that big and I can't even, I don't feel comfortable with my shirt off. So I agree with everyone when they're saying, um, you know, you have to love yourself. Um, Nobody else is going to see that. And then Craig said it this morning, like, fuck what everybody else says. Fuck, like, forget it. Like, this is how I am. And don't catfish people. Like, I see some friends, you know, they they put up pictures when they're trying to date from 10 years ago. We know you're not that size. And when you meet, you're not going to be that size. So let the person be drawn to the real you. And that's what I, you know, that's what I do. I put it out there. This is me on some of the dating profiles. I'll even put it in the description. I'm fluffy, whatever you want to call it. I can use that word. Um, Fluffy, (laughs) thick. you know, I'm a little bigger. And, you know, it calls for, you know, I met someone recently and they're like, you know, they love me for who I am, not because of, you know, I'm trying to pretend to be someone else. So that's my little two cents I wanted to add. So I actually know Andrew in real life. Oh, okay. Okay, good. So Andrew, so, I, I, well, I know what well, well he he was following me and then we ended up meeting in, in real life. Okay. Um so Andrew, I've body shamed you before. No, no, oh. I'm not saying no, you I, no. I, I, no. I, I, so, I, yeah, I, <laughs> yeah. I be clear no. for the people. Yeah, for the people, Craig has never body shamed. He's not, he says things that are as Derek alluded to that are problematic. Like, a little bit, like on the Maddie in the morning. I don't know if it was this morning or, or yesterday. You did apologize, so I don't want to bring it back up. But you said something. I was like, "Ooh!" I said, like I, that. Said, "I said John Gray, <laughs> Pastor John Gray, with his walrus-shaped ass." 
So for those that may have a walrus shaped ass, that could be a little bit offensive, you know, but. but see, I, think, just, see, I think I think that people that are not in the people that are not in the space, you know, they say, oh, y'all just being too sensitive when but when, but, if, but in the same space, I mean, it, it, all, it all goes back to just. You know, we guys kind of watch what we say about it. But but I but I have to go back. Yes. Because what you you all want me to be conscious of. Okay, oh, go. I, I'm gonna acquiesce and just say yes. I do sometimes body shape, even though I don't believe that I do. But I'm gonna acquiesce. But you all want me to be extra cautious and sensitive and thoughtful of not saying heavy or fluffy or portly. Well, no, but I, you all can say old. No, 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 no. Once again. Back to the back to the original part of this conversation that we started having, Craig. I'm not asking you to do that. That's I'm what I'm saying, Tracy. If I can't call y'all fat, even though I don't want to, I don't want to. But if I can't Tracy, call you fat, again, we don't call you old. We just say older. You know, you're just no, 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 no. You don't say old. Why not? Wait, I, 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 wait, wait, quick, quick, quick. Go ahead. Listen, once again, Tracy, this for you too. What I'm saying to Craig, I'm not saying. Listen, me, me and Craig go back and forth. With our with our banter, mm -hmm. I'm fine with that. All I bring, all I like to do is bring stuff to Craig's attention to understand what it is. All you gotta do is say, you know what? I may do that. I, mean, I ain't gonna like I said. I'll call you old. I ain't gonna stop. You know, you may do your little things, but I just want to say, hey, I just want to let you know that this is what it is. You can say, you know what? I thought about that. You. That's all I'm asking you. I'm not asking you to stop. I'm not asking you to be any of that stuff. I'm just saying to you that you got to be conscious of this is what you're doing. But it's not even just you. It, Keon says it. Keon is 25. He always be like, oh, you old. Da, da, da. Like, that's like the go-to. That's, that's the only thing, it seems like. The oh, kids. it's not the only thing, sweetie. That's <laughs> just the only thing that we just say. I, I just say in front of this because they can just see it. But thank you, Andrew. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> hey Bijan. What's going on, y'all? How y'all doing? We good. How, How are, you? are you? I'm doing well. I just wanted to touch bases with y'all real quick and just say like I caught the last little piece of it. Mm -hmm. But as you all know, body shaming is wrong. A person that's big like myself, I you know, I've struggled with my weight over the years. I had cancer when I was five. So mm -hmm. I'm gone from being extremely small from the chemotherapy and everything to when everything came back, like my smell, my my taste, eating everything. And I was spoiled. So I did grow with the silver spoon and it was the silver spoon that was feeding me, okay? Mm -hmm. <laughs> my great grandma, that was her way to your heart. She cooked a mighty good meal for you. You ate it up and that was that. But as I got older, I never felt uncomfortable until I actually came out. And you have all these different visions of what, being not so much as what being gay is, but what being attractive is in the mm -hmm. gay community. And you mm -hmm. have so many people that like ostracize you, put you down, make you feel some type of way because you're not this centerfold or this this Greek god symbol of sex. Mm -hmm. And it took a while for me. And you know, I, I was lucky enough to come into an organization that you know it, it deemed for big boys. And mm -hmm. to love yourself and appreciate yourself. The only problem with that was when we would come together to have fun over the weekend, it would be there. But after that, like once we went home, it, I, I put on the same mask. I took the mask off and mm -hmm. put on the, you know what I mean? So, mm -hmm. you know, it's really hard to be content with yourself when you have people that have lost weight telling you, oh, if, you're, look, if you lost weight, you'll feel better. If you lose weight, this and that, which is true, you'll be healthier. But that doesn't necessarily mean that someone doesn't look good because they're not smaller. Mm -hmm. Some people lost weight and they look like they was on crack. <laughs> so, you know what I mean? Like, I think everybody has a preference. Everybody has a certain swag when it comes to dating and just being, you know, what their vision of sexy is. Like they said, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. I know mm -hmm. I'm somebody's meal out there. I'm a couple of people's meal out there. All right. Mm -hmm. I may be just somebody's snack, but that doesn't mean that I'm going to tear down the next person for being smaller than me or tear down the next person for even being bigger than me. Mm -hmm. You do what you do when it's time for you to do it. And you shouldn't let society or other people who may not be comfortable within themselves, you know what I'm saying, resonate that into your mind. 
It mm-hmm. does start with self love, and that's something that's really hard to get when you haven't been taught how to do it. Mm-hmm. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? People really don't. Really, they say all you gotta do is love yourself. All you gotta do is be that. How when you don't know how to do that? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, I think everybody should just take it one day at a time. Um, one of the comments was someone put a mirror in their um in their bathtub. That's something that I'm gonna do because believe it or not. I'm going I'm still struggling with my own self identity. You know what I mean? So it is something that I'm seeing is a work in progress. I thought when I was 35, honey, I was going to be hot shit. But I realized <laughs> that uh uh-uh, baby, them problems still carry on. <laughs> <laughs> Age don't change nothing but just the pro- the more the, the more thinking about it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I just want to say to everybody out there that's big, love your motherfucking self. Not, and not so much as in a, stand, uh, in a self-esteem sense, but love where you at right now. Mm-hmm. Don't worry about what you're going to have coming around. Or, oh, ooh, no, she didn't come here all shopping. No, I she wasn't talking about you. And <laughs> I, I was because I only got no perm, so don't no, they, no, they were talking about what you said when they lose weight is when you're on crack. Right. Right. <laughs> Right, you saw how he looked. He looked like a deflated balloon. I don't got time for that. So I'd rather be swole. I'd rather go from being a big boy to being a swole boy or a more healthier boy. But mm. when I go to the doctor, they don't say anything about diabetes. I have one kidney. My kidney is the sh- in the shape of a seventeen-year-old boy. Mm-hmm. That means that I'm good. Like my fluids are flowing, baby. Okay, <laughs> so you can be big and still be healthy. It's your choice, not society's choice, or not somebody you trying to date's choice. It's your choice. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. I felt when I somebody said something that I didn't agree with. I'm not gonna call them out because I know y'all, y'all not, y'all not about that. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to bring that to the stage. But what I will say is, they know who they are, and they still working within their inner selves. Mm-hmm. You can't tell somebody that you can get small or lose weight and you'll look better and you tired of the clothes that you wear not fitting you because, baby, in the words of Nene Leakes, when you got the coins, they can make it in your size. And that's all I'm going to say. You know, and we're going to leave it at that. Thank you so much. Thank you. You're welcome. Well. Thank you, you You're well. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, we have one last person that joined a few moments ago. Yes, and then once we get that, we gotta, I got to clear some things up over here. So okay. Yeah. So that's, you know, let's get that. Hello. Hi. Can you guys Is hear me O'Neal? okay? Yeah, it's O'Neal. Hi, O'Neal. Hey, O'Neal. How are you? I'm great. Um, So somebody mentioned about, like, how their body physique brought up other people kind of wanting to place them in different categories as far as relationships. Mm-hmm. And I thought that was so interesting because I'm 22. I'm, like, 100 15 pounds at my best day. (laughs) So like I get a lot of men um, and I'm bisexual. So I'm interested in men and women. I'm attracted to energy. I believe that where we vibrate at just resonates with the right people. But as far as dating men, I've realized that a lot of men want me to play this role of like their spiritual healer and their feminine lover and like this interesting dynamic that they create, which I believe is just based upon just the societal norms that happen um, from our own family members and things of that nature. And I always thought that was weird because it's just like my personality, to me, I never saw myself as this feminine being or entity, but I started to really think that way. And I realized it was because of my size, like even as far as how people, um, like I'll go into the club and people would just feel comfortable touching me because I'm smaller and I'm not short. I'm about five, nine, but they still feel comfortable. I look a little bit younger than I actually am. Mm -hmm. Um, It's just how people feel entitled to your bodies and just able. I don't believe that people should degrade you or make you feel like you have to fit into a certain archetype of a person just based upon how you look. I think life is so much deeper than that. And if we all just try to, not to be on my kumbaya, but <laughs> if we all try to just look a little bit deeper into ourselves, like I've been on my healing journey because I just saw my family and just how so many of us as Black people operate from such harmful places just within ourselves. And we are constantly projecting that. And um, the beautiful woman was talking about how 
taller women um, are seen as threatening. And even myself, like I've seen taller women, I'm like, damn, like, wow, I'm looking at me like, why am I so short? <laughs> like, and this woman, but it's just like, I, it's, it goes to race, it goes to just how we view sex and how we view our bodies as sexual objects um, and objects to be consumed. Um, and I just thought that was interesting. I just wanted to chime in real quick and say that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that. Thank you very much, Onia. We appreciate yeah. that. What city are you in? Where are you located? I'm in North Carolina. In North Carolina. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for that. Thank you, Onia. Awesome. Peace out, y'all. All righty. Okay, now what did you want to correct or clear clarify? Yeah, let me just clarify some things now. Because communication is our partner. Clarity is our friend. Yes. So... Body shaming, age shaming, all these things are just the titles of what it is. So what what I may say you do just falls under the category of body shaming. You mm -hmm. know, now, old shame, me calling you old, is that part of age shaming? Then yes, because that's what the category it falls underneath. Now, and it's not no, I don't think that when you make whatever comment you make or do whatever you do, it's not from a a negative space, mm -hmm. but it, it is in a space. Mm -hmm. Like when me said something about me being old, it's not from a negative space, it's just from an obvious space. You know, so, <laughs> so you 44, know, 44 is not old, it's older, it's older, yeah, than me, older than you, yeah, that's all. But you know, you should hope to get there one day, I will. But guess what? I get to 44, you're gonna still be what older, older. than me, so let's make that very clear. Cause you know, I see all your, I see your peoples come mm -hmm. on, pushing on through, and I'm like, child, all right, girl. But see, my main, my main thing with younger folk, and you're not younger, <laughs> but younger folk like the Keons of the world that are 25, and they're like, oh, you old. My thing to them is always, well, where do you think you're headed? Well, so wait, and one more thing, and Tracy, cause that's you, you should be on Craig's side. That's right, the that's day, my girl. The day that I called Craig drunk, he was drunk. So, sweetie, that's what I mean. I wasn't calling him a drunk. He was drunk. So, that's what <laughs> I was once again stating the obvious. <laughs> but, but you know, but, um, but you know, for me, it's like when young folk, 25, 20s, mm -hmm. say, oh, you're old or whatever. Like, it, it really truly does not offend me. Like, yeah. I'm just giving you a hard time. But I just, I always say to them, like, well, where do you think you're going? <laughs> like, <laughs> you're not going down in age. You're mm -hmm. going up. And if you're lucky, you'll get to 44, you know, because a lot of folk didn't make it. So I, I always never really understand. I never really understand it when young folks say it like, right. as, as an insult. And I'm like, well, I mean, well, you know, I, I do fall in that young folk category. <laughs> Girl, you're delusional. <laughs> 44 is the new 33. Yeah, you know what? And honestly, we... um. When we had our age, our age shaming um, panel, mm -hmm. you know, and what we and what we learned is that most of them didn't even find themselves. So they was in their today's forty five. Listen, I'm trying to tell you because most of your children are lost. Oh, now I'm a child. Make up your mind, Craig. Am I one of the kids, or what? Am, what am I? Well, where, 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 where you're, am I? You're, you're somewhere mixed in between <laughs> young and old. <laughs> you're in that forgotten space. I, I really actually am. <laughs> Oh my God! Um, but yo, this is a great conversation. I, I really enjoyed, you know, people hearing the people's stories, um, hearing people's insight um, on it, mm -hmm. and um, yeah. But I, I know Craig didn't really have much to say in this conversation because she doesn't understand any of these things we're talking about. So he, he was very lost during the conversation, but it's fine, you know. Well, you know, this is more of your space. Right, yeah, I mean, you know that <laughs> all that sex talk is your space. And this is no, it is not. It is. How 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 old are you? Someone said. Am I late thirties, but not late as in forty? Derek will be thirty nine in November. I'll be thirty. What am I? Gonna be? Will I be thirty nine? Yeah, I guess I will be. I'm an eighties baby. Eighty one. That's thirty nine, huh? <laughs> I was like, I'm going to be 38. But I, oh, now you got amnesia. <laughs> no, I really, I really, did, I really thought. Oh, so you took that little tumble on your bike yesterday, so you can't remember. 
<laughs> yeah, Derek. <laughs> look, Derek texted me today. It was like my shoulder is sore. Now, for those of you that, that follow, those of you that follow my social media, in particular my um my Patreon, you know that I fell on my bike. What was it about two months ago? Yes, I fell on my bike, cut my hand all open. It was sore. Like it literally just stopped being sore like last week. It healed, but underneath it was like the muscle was still sore. Mm -hmm. And I, I mean, I li I broke my bike. I had to get it repaired. They gave me no sympathy. He had one little scrape yesterday. They're gonna come text me today, tell about, oh my god, I scraped my leg, and tell about, oh my shoulder hurts. I'm like, girl, I don't want to hear nothing about that. <laughs> I feel that. hard though, <laughs> <laughs> and, and it was nobody around to even try to save me. I had to save my damn self. Well, I, I had happened to call Derek <laughs> because you know we sometimes have a little distance between us, and so I called Derek because we were in this little we were in, this, in these trees, <laughs> and I said uh, I called him just to make sure he was still close by, and I said, "Hey, you still following, right?" He said, "Yeah, I'm here." And baby, when I say I heard the accident happen real time, <laughs> I was like, "God damn it!" I said, "Wait, dude, what happened? You?" You okay? Like, and, he, oh. and there was nothing. And then I said, "Did you fall?" And he still said nothing. I said, "Derek, did you fall?" He said, "Yes, child, I fell." It was terrible. So look, I got, I got off my bike and I went back, and he, he was, he was pulling himself up off the ground. <laughs> we ain't supposed to laugh about that. Oh my god, he was pulling himself up off the ground. <laughs> On that slippery ass bitch, we on that slippery ass um, oh my god bridge. Oh my god! While we decided to go ride in a hurricane. I oh don't my know. god, that was so funny. But anyway, <laughs> so what are we talking about next week? Now next week is good. Okay. But I mean, our next kind of this is a good conversation. But next week, I'm very excited about mm -hmm. is about hyper masculinity in the LGBTQ community. Yes, and that is about just how. We first perceive what masculinity is. Mm -hmm. Why do we think that you have to be so masculine to be a man? Mm -hmm. um, and then what effects does hypermasculinity cause on black gay men? Black gay men, black gay relationships. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it just runs the gamut. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to this conversation. And, and from a and this is not only from it's from a lesbian standpoint too. Absolutely, because lesbians are, always know, feel like they, they have. have to, not, I shouldn't say always. I mean, not speaking in, uh, in absolutes, but oftentimes, really masculine um, presenting lesbians mm -hmm. oftentimes feel, in my opinion, feel the need to assert their masculinity when mm -hmm. they're in the room of men. Mm -hmm. It's almost like they want you to know I'm here, mm -hmm. you know, and it gives all of that, and it's just like, okay. Chill out. We mm -hmm. see. So we want to hear from lesbian women as well. But I also, in particular, I think we need to start giving some kind of direction too. Okay. In particular, I want to hear from gay men who felt it necessary to butch it up. Butch it up. There you go. Mm -hmm. And you really knew at the core of who you were that you, that you were my, a my sister. <laughs> and you had a little change first. Right. No, I'm just <laughs> You know you had on a pair of sheer stockings. No, no, I'm just playing. No, no but seriously. <laughs> no, I'm just playing. But no, so seriously, we want to hear from you. We want to hear from gay men who really felt the need. And even if you presented that way in a relationship, mm -hmm. like when you're dating, like, okay, funny story. When I first came into this community, you know, I don't use the word lifestyle. Um, one of my, the guy that I was really close to that I was friends with, he was older than me. He probably was like 37 and I was like 22, 23. And he was one of those ones, like around just friends. He was very feminine. He was very comfortable in his skin. Mm -hmm. But whenever we would go out, he was very, oh, yo, what's going on? Like he was very, he was very this. He was very given all of that, especially if he was interested in a guy. Mm -hmm. He put this, he wore this mask, this masculine mask. Mm -hmm. So I want to hear from, from those of you who felt the same way, who mm -hmm. or may even feel the need to do it now. Mm -hmm. You may not have um, recovered from that. So yeah, so yeah, hyper masculinity is our next conversation. If you want to participate, here's the email address. Please don't DM us on Instagram and those places. Yeah. I definitely don't look at that. Why are you laughing, girl? Cut you something else. <laughs> I definitely. Don't. 
<laughs> but listen, if you want to participate in the conversation, this is the way to participate. Yes. Right here. GLMConvo at gmail.com. So, right. G L M as in gay like me. GLMConvo at gmail.com. Email us a picture of yourself. We have to say this every week because you all still send emails with our <laughs> pictures. Email us a picture of yourself, your phone number, and a brief explanation for why you want to participate in this conversation. Yes. And we will have our assistant that we pay. Yes. So we, we need your assistance you. in paying our assistant. <laughs> right. Because we got these flies and stuff. We got lights and stuff going on in here. We got AC. Uh, uh, we're at Craig's house tonight, you guys. Just wanted to let you guys know. That's because you got on your broomstick tonight and came over here. <laughs> oh, so now you witch shame. You know what, y'all. Thank you guys for supporting what we do. Thank yes. you for supporting our work. We'll see you in two weeks. Two yes. weeks from today, we're going to be talking about hypermasculinity. All right. Please share this video. Subscribe to both of our channels. Like the video on both of our channels. We appreciate your commentary. We appreciate you participating. All right. Bye. Bye, -bye. Let me see if I'm going to run a commercial. No, right. you are press and broadcast. Uh-huh. SayItInACard.com is an online greeting card company that delivers right to your front door. Visit our website, www.SayItInACard.com. You can read the cards, order the cards, and we ship them directly to you. If you feel it, we say it in a card. We have breakup cards, troubled relationship cards, troubled friendship cards, and of course, all of the traditional cards as well, from birthday to Mother's Day. So again, visit us at www.SayItInACard.com. Free shipping for a limited time. Good day, thinkers, thought leaders, progressives, and dreamers. I'm Craig the Writer Stewart, and this is So Much to Say YouTube TV. These are my thoughts in my voice on black shit, white shit, gay shit, and everything in between. So Much to Say YouTube TV is the place that you come to learn and grow because we discuss socially relevant things mixed with a splash of humor. If you know you have tissue paper feelings, this probably isn't the channel for you. But and however, since you're here, I just need for you to do two things. Hit the like button. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and turn on that little bell so that you get the notification every single time that I go live or upload something new. I'll see you soon. Bye. Good day, thinkers, thought leaders, progressives, and dreamers. I'm Craig the Writer Stu Wait, that's not what this is. This is from my Patreon, my exclusive video diary. Get a behind the scenes look of my life with my friends, family, behind the scenes recording of So Much to Say podcast, and the Queen Supreme Court live show. You done poofed the girl. You in the tell poof. There's even a subscription level for aspiring writers. My Patreon video diary is just five bucks a month. I'm in here starving. Let me tell you what this bitch. <laughs> and what information do you know sitting the phone number? I just thought they were just interviewing me, asking me, you know, general questions. You got ah! So join now. Visit www.patreon.com forward slash Craig the Writer Stewart. Bye.